Guilty by Association, a safe haven orphanage mystery. An audio series by Patricia Asedic Bega. Series finale. Fifteen-year-old Josephine had evidently not heard Elizabeth come into the room, as the sigh Elizabeth let out made Josephine look up in what seemed to be a very guilty manner. What are you up to? Elizabeth asked her younger sister, who had her back turned to her. Considering that Josephine was known to always be up to something, it was a safe guess to think that it would not be different on that occasion. Nothing, Josephine replied. So if I have a look under your pillow, I won't find anything, she asked, just as Jane came in. Why do you need to know everything? I'm entitled to my privacy, and I don't have to tell you what I have or don't have was the haughty reply Elizabeth got from Josephine, who was eyeing both sisters in what no one could describe as a friendly manner. You are under no obligation to tell us anything. But Mamma, Well, Mamma is a different story. So if you would rather show her whatever you were protecting so fiercely... Jane's voice trailed off, and Josephine, with an angry gesture, took out something from under her pillow. It is a gift from a friend. She showed them two jars of creams, and Elizabeth took them from her. Which friend? Where did you meet this friend? These creams are expensive. We sell them in our store, Elizabeth grilled Josephine. Just a friend. I met him walking back from school. He stopped his car to talk to my friends and I, and I've seen him a few times since then. He gave me these today. He said that he bought them just for me and that they're quite expensive. Josephine beamed, recalling the moment that she was gifted her prized possessions. You know we are not to take gifts from men, especially men that Mamma hasn't met and especially ones that cost so much. Elizabeth turned the jars over, and then suddenly something caught her attention. Exactly what did he tell you about them? And what do you know about him? What's his name? She asked Josephine, who was ready to pounce on the creams, not wanting them to get confiscated. He said that he's a businessman. His name is James. He said I could call him Jimmy. That's the name of one of the security guards at the mall, Elizabeth exclaimed in shock. It was the last thing she had expected to hear. What does he look like? Do you have a picture? She asked, not believing what was happening. He's tall, lanky, has an afro. He drives a red car, not sure of the make. He should be in his early twenties and he said he'll marry me. Who is going to marry you? They had not heard their mother come in. Elizabeth knew from the way her eyes had swept around the room that she had taken in all that was going on. The woman continued observing Josephine, who had a new suitor almost every month that she assured was willing to marry her. Josephine's new friend gave her this, saying that it cost a good deal of money. But look what it says here on the label. Not for sale. These are exactly like the gifts that went missing from my boss's office. So either this person was lied to and sold a free product at a very expensive price, or he's involved in something shady. What's clear is that he didn't pay for these in any shop, but he gave them to our Josephine like he bought them especially for her. It might all be a coincidence, and not related to all that is going on that's threatening my job, but the description of the young man in a red car... Where have I heard that before lately? Elizabeth frowned and wondered as their mother looked over the products. Josephine, do you see this boy every day? The woman asked, and the girl nodded, her bravado gone. She could not keep that up with their mother. We need a photograph of him and his car. Now, I know that you are good at sneaking things in and out of this house and that your friends have mobiles. Get a photograph of him and of his car and send it to Sally's phone. I'll ask her to print them out. Now, about the other issue. There was a pause. Everyone knew the house rules. Their mother asked to be informed about every single thing that came in or was taken out. But rules were broken a few times. Elizabeth turned around. Uche, Chidi and Hilda had joined them. 
In that house, whenever something occurred, there was a kind of silent alarm that went off and all magically appeared at the scene. I know some of you are itching to get out of this house. I know that as you get older, you have to sacrifice more. But if there is one thing you don't lack, it is love and care that you have in abundance. I don't speak about it, but my marriage was not a happy one. You can foresee a lot of things during courtship, but mine was short and my mother practically decided for me. She thought Mr. Elotu had all the qualities that a good husband should have. He was from a well-to-do home. He was an ambitious man, had a home, his own car. But when after a few years, children did not come, the actions of his family, of mine and his own, were far from ideal. I made my vows with the intent of keeping them till death would separate us. But not everyone, when faced with difficulties, remembers what was promised. He didn't. You'll meet people that will promise you the world. Guess what? We tend to do that when we want to get things out of others. Josephine, you are here probably admiring your treasures and believing what that man told you. He either is a thief or he bought stolen goods. But most worrying is that he is promising a 15-year-old girl from an orphanage marriage. It just tells me a lot about him. and I don't like any of it. I can't afford to pay for a university education for any of you, but I am working hard to get you training in a field that will provide you with the opportunity to make a living. It's my daily prayer that those that want to will find a way afterwards to further their education can do so. Josephine, you're a beautiful girl. People outside see it, but don't be in a hurry to leave this house, not for an empty promise. I have said this time without number, Don't accept gifts from men you do not know. There's nothing they can give you that is worth the problems they bring, and every man that has honourable intentions towards you will come to this house first. Some people might be tempted to act on the thought that because you children grew up in an orphanage, that you are unprotected, that they can get away with anything, but that's not the case, not for any of you. Josephine, I'm watching you. Gloria Alotu made a sign with her fingers that made everyone burst out into laughter, as they had not expected her to know how to do that. I'm a modern mother, she winked as she left the room. This is all your fault. Had you left it all alone, Mama would not have heard and given me another lecture, and I was not going to do anything wrong. I didn't ask for the gifts. He gave them to me because he wanted to, Josephine said in an accusatory manner. That is what is most worrying, that he gave you two products that we know of, that say on a label on them that they aren't for sale, which he should have been intelligent enough to remove, but he didn't. There is also the possibility that they were stolen from the shop Elizabeth works in. He claims that he paid a lot of money for them, which, if he is an innocent buyer and not the thief, again, that should be another warning sign. He didn't buy them in a shop. Josephine, for some reason you are the only one who did not sober up by the story Mama just told us. You complain about your present situation, but seem to insist on running towards a terrible future. Josephine, you are to take the photographs and send them, and then never ever speak to him again, or any other person that stops to speak to you on the street. If a man stops his car, you keep walking. Have I made myself clear? Yuche was her hero. All the inhabitants of the little orphanage looked up to him. Josephine nodded, and Elizabeth took the two creams from her sister. They were proof. Elizabeth approached the entrance of the mall. Obby was eating plantain chips from a bag, and Jimmy was not in sight. It had been two days since the discovery, and the printed photographs were in her bag. She just needed to uncover a few more things, before being brought before Mrs. Aliu on Monday. Oh no, the girl from the orphanage was not going to go down just like that. Not without a fight. Elizabeth, I need you to make me up. 
come into my office. The girl gave a start as she had not heard their boss come in. She had gone in early, not knowing at what time Mrs. Aliou would arrive, hoping that she had not been spoken to yet. Mrs. Aliou had her own stuff in her office, so Elizabeth went in. The woman had seated herself in front of the mirror and had closed her eyes. Elizabeth wondered if something had been said to her already, and it was to be a final job before she was kicked out. But then there was a knock at the door, and after being commanded to enter, Bosse and Emily did so. Mrs. Aliou opened one of her eyes, and that was the cue for them to speak. Sorry to disturb you, Ma, but there have been incidents that have been happening that need to be brought to your attention, Bosse said. Mahan, speak. I have somewhere to be at, their boss replied. There have been things that have gone missing, aside from the ones you discovered, Ma, and we have observed a very strange pattern since Elizabeth arrived. She's responsible for everything. We feel that she should not continue working here. Emily finished the explanation. Elizabeth stood aside as both Mrs. Aliou's eyes popped open, and she observed them all. At that precise moment, there was another knock at the door. The person on the other side did not wait to be invited in, and Eloise walked in. Her aunt looked at her sternly. Sorry, auntie, I just feel I should be present here. I have something to say. I see, the woman said. Perhaps everyone should be here. Go out and put the shutter halfway. When the remaining customers leave, close it and ask Adonika and Ruth to come in. Mrs. Aliou stood up and walked around to her desk and sat down. She opened her laptop and concentrated on something on it. A few minutes later, another knock produced the three other girls. Go on, you have made an accusation and you must have proof. Other than that things have been happening since she arrived, or that Elizabeth was the one who stocked up products, or opened up boxes when they were delivered, or that she was the one that... It has to be something different from that, the woman warned her senior employees. Elizabeth raised her hand to speak, and Mrs. Aliou nodded at her. Ma, I haven't stolen a single thing. Bosse and Emily called me up to your office and accused me of being responsible for all that has been happening. So I started keeping my eyes open. Everyone here had the opportunity to do so. Some, I would argue, more than me. I have no idea about what you keep or do not keep in your office, or where the keys to certain drawers are. That isn't difficult to find out. All you have to do is watch. As for the opportunity, you've been alone in this office a good number of times. Bosse interrupted. As has everyone else. But anyway, I found these two products, gifted to someone I know. Elizabeth put them on the table, and they all looked at them in surprise. All I had to do to sneak them in today was walk towards Obby. He barely looked at my bag. He was on his phone. Something everyone that has worked here for some time would know. If you get Jimmy, your bag gets a thorough search, and you better have a receipt for something new inside. Obby will just give a quick look, and if you give him some food... He won't even do that. So, before you ordered us to be searched, madam, it was easy. And afterwards, it was still easy to get products out of the store. The person that had this said a young man gave them to her. He said they had cost a lot of money. You can all recognise that they are part of the miniatures bought to gift special customers. They are not for sale. The person said that the man that gave them to her was called Jimmy. Elizabeth paused. All eyes were on her. The security guard? He doesn't come in here. Are you trying to get him involved? Madam, don't listen to her. She's just trying to implicate other people. He has had zero opportunities, Bosse retorted. I was thrown off at first. I then started thinking of everyone that was connected to a young man that fitted the description. Adonika has various male friends. Ruth has a boyfriend, as has Eloise. Emily has two sons, and you all were here when things went missing, because this has been happening even before I started working here, Elizabeth defended herself. Hey, you think I will stoop so low as to steal? Of course not, Adonika protested, as Ruth also energetically denied her involvement. Then I found out that last week a very expensive jacket and some blouses were stolen from another shop here. 
I understood that someone had found an illegal way of making money out of a connection the person has working in this mall, and I suspected that Oname had been a scapegoat. I spoke to her and arrived at the conclusion that I was being prepared to be the next one to take the fall, and I would have. But then I got the photograph of the person that was going around sharing a few products to impress a young girl. Someone that was also recognised to have been in the shop the day that very expensive jacket was stolen. This is the person and the car he was driving. Elizabeth took out the folded printed photographs from her pocket and laid them out on the table, her eyes on Adonike's face. But a movement distracted her. Mrs. Aliu picked them up and looked at them, every one inch closer. This is your son, Emily. Adonika, go and get security. If you take another step, Emily, I promise you that it will be much worse for you. I don't joke. You should know that by now. Emily had made a go for the door and stood still. The other three girls had not yet reacted. A few moments later, Jimmy came in following Adonika. Ha, Emily. So your son had the audacity to use my name in his criminal activities. Mrs. Aliu, this wicked act can't go unpunished. I called my boss on the way here. The theft of the jacket was reported, and that was worth so much money, the security guard said as he stood right in front of the door. The indignation he felt written all over his face as the owner of the shop made a call asking someone else to come in. See, I got a visit yesterday from a woman that waited for over an hour in my home until I got back from a meeting I was at. A woman who let me know in no uncertain terms that she would not allow her daughter to be accused of any kind of foul play, and then gave me a few pointers about what I was doing wrong in my business. Elizabeth, you are one lucky girl to have someone that can stand up for you that way. It's a gift. So I listened to her list. Oh, she had a long list. But she was right. You people are going to ruin me if I don't do something about what's going on, yes? Come in, she ordered, and Oname walked in. Good, we are all complete, so we can continue. Now, I don't know if Bosse was in on it too. Maybe you were getting a cut from the illegal sales. I understand that Emily has set up a home beauty business. I overheard you tell a customer the other day, Emily, which, by the way, you're not allowed to. I just had no idea that you were getting your supplies from my shop. Mrs. Aliu said. No, Ma, I had no idea, really. I am innocent. Bosse stopped talking as soon as her boss sent a withering look. You see, either you are also a thief or a very incompetent supervisor. Oname here was forced to resign by two of you after you accused her of theft. I spoke to her yesterday after Gloria Alotu's visit and she explained everything that happened the situation she had been in at the time, and how defenceless she had felt. You two run this place. Bosse, how could you not have seen what was going on? It's all very suspicious. Mrs. Aliu fixed her gaze on the woman in question. No, Ma, I did not know. Emily always had the stock updated by the time we changed shift. If anything was missing, she must have taken care of it, doctored the stock. She was the one who told me that we were to search Oname's bag. When we found the cream, it was natural to assume that she had been responsible for the irregularities. I really thought I was doing the right thing. I've been under a lot of stress in my personal life. Bosse's voice trailed off as she tried to explain her way out of a situation that she'd help create. I don't care about what's going on in your personal life. You have bullied my workers. How are you going to give Oname the peace you stole from her? The money she would have made here because she was earning more here. How can you undo what you did? I'm not going to bother facing Emily. The police will deal with you. But like Elizabeth's mother pointed out, at the end of the day, the responsibility is mine and the fault is mine. So I've been looking through the numbers. Eloise, why do you have less sales than the rest? The woman turned her gaze to her young relative, who looked as if she wanted the ground to open and swallow her up, and who was wisely not offering up an explanation. You are on probation one month. 
If I as much get another report of you talking on your phone for 20 minutes, I will fire you. Have I spoken in a language you've understood? The girl nodded, looking solemnly at her aunt. Adonika and Ruth are making good sales, as is Elizabeth. Ah, I see the police is here. This is the woman officer. Please escort her to her locker so she can collect her things. I will be making a statement about all that has gone missing. And Mrs. Ajayi from the boutique has a lot to say too. She's very upset by what was stolen from her shop. Yes, madam, you will be needed at the station. Please bring a list of all the stolen items. Someone will be picking up her son. Something tells me that they are doing the same thing in other places. I won't be surprised if she scouts for customers from the mall, asking them to contact her later, probably promising them items at reduced rates. Take her away, the uniformed man in charge commanded, and two other officers escorted the woman out. Jimmy followed, looking all professional. Bosse, Mrs. Aliou said, I think that your time here is up. See, I have to offer Oname her job back. It would only be fair, so there is no space for you in my shop. Ah, the woman put her hands on her head. Please, Ma, there are a lot of things the girls don't know how to do. With Emily gone, you'll need me. Plus, there will be five people and we are normally six in total, Bosse pleaded. I'm thinking that five people may be enough. I employed a thief and a supervisor that has made too many mistakes to mention. Look at the sales. Just look at them. Not to count the losses I've suffered. No. Ruth will be the supervisor for her shift. Adonika, I don't want a single complaint about not listening to her. Oname, Eloise and Elizabeth will be in the other shift. Now, I am going to change the bonus system. It will be collective instead of individual, but I will be taking individual sales into consideration as well. Bosse, your list of infractions is quite lengthy. I need to think about you. I'll call you if I change my mind. The rest of you can get back to work. They all started walking out of the office. Elizabeth's legs felt like jelly. It had been a close call. Turning around, she saw that Bosse had not moved. The woman was still pleading with their boss. To stay up to date with Patricia Acedic Baker's work, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.